Right. Good morning, John. Uh, I think uh, the students should be joining in soon. Let's begin this time with a word of prayer uh, before we get into our session. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this time. We thank you for giving us yet another opportunity to just come together and learn. Lord, we thank you for this entire course of urban church planting and uh, thank you for everything that you have imparted in us, Lord. We pray that even as we continue to learn uh, that Holy Spirit, you will speak and minister, that you will, Lord, uh, open up new doors, new visions, new plans and thoughts in our hearts and our spirit, Lord, to build your kingdom. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise and glory. We just submit this time into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, all right, so last class we we looked at uh, chapter 24 when it comes to ministry. How do we make the journey? How do we step out? We get on the ground, we get started. Uh, we establish commitment to the call that God has for us. Uh, uh, and remember, when in, when in a ministry, whether it is church planting or any other, uh, you know, any other part of ministry, uh -huh. distractions are part of it there's going to be distractions coming from every side there's going to be challenges there are going to be ups and downs uh you know life is not always easy right you will have ups and downs right there there will be things that you have not foreseen or, or situations that you may not have thought of just come up right in front of you uh but here's the thing you stay focused um uh, I love what, uh, you know, just a reminder, you know, uh, as long as when Jesus was walking on the water, you know, I always think about this, as long as Jesus was walking on the water and, and he said, Peter, come forth, and Peter also walked on the water, he was doing the impossible. But as long as his eyes was on Jesus, Peter was able to walk on the water. The moment he turned his face, and looked elsewhere, looked at the storm, he began to sink. Right? And it's a powerful lesson for us. You know, uh, you may be walking on the storm, you may be walking on waters, uh, doing the impossible, doing what God has called us to do. Um, stay focused, let your eyes be fixed on Jesus. Uh, he is the author, the completer of our faith. Right? Be tenacious be persistent right don't quit until god says your work is done right now uh, you know i would always say this ministry is not for the faint-hearted right if we are you know when i say ministry i'm talking about you know church planning pioneering ministry we talked about it right we need to be spiritually strong we need to be consistent we need to be disciplined we need to be uh, you know, walk in wisdom, plan, prepare, uh, make the right decisions. There's so much that is involved uh, as you make this journey, right? Uh, uh, we've got to keep learning, keep adjusting, uh, protect what you have. You know, last class, we just talked about that, right? You protect what you have nurtured over the years, right? So this could be in uh, wrong alliances, uh, you know, nowadays we've got ministries working together. That's wonderful. Uh, but make sure that you choose the right ministry. Prayerfully decide uh, how you want to, you know, together as ministries, how you want to serve the Lord together, right? Be a steward, not an owner. That means encourage others to be part of what you're doing. Take care uh, of yourself uh, and talk about yourself it is your 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 physical health your mental health your abilities your skills take care of it develop it grow in it uh, and very importantly plan for the future generations right uh, uh, when you plan uh, you know the apostle paul did it where he was able to raise up leaders and he appointed these leaders he knew that raising up the next generation was very important, right? Because they'll be leaving the legacy. Uh, you, When you raise up the next generation, you know that the work is going to continue. 
and and that is called leaving a legacy right and then there'll come a time when you'll have to step out and hand over things at the right time so uh, let's go to chapter 25 uh, if you look at your notes there's uh, there's just a question there uh, but let's just talk about this right now growing up in you know maybe the early 90s i know some of them maybe even before that 90s early 2000s and many of us have seen church right like you know what church was and how the church has evolved right you can also look at the things that are happening in in terms of urban living in terms of life right around us you know early 90s we didn't have mobile phones we didn't have so much that we have right now right? so life has been progressing and right now we are in 2023 life will continue to progress we will definitely see progress year after year decade after decade now this is 2023 2020 2033 10 years a decade from now it is so obvious that uh, when you look at the future things would be so much more advanced so much more you know technology media all of these things will only cause urban living to just go up to different levels so let's talk about urban life right now uh, we did that little bit of a survey right we've seen that especially in uh, our nation nation of india and i could also say in africa we've got a lot of uh these village villages and towns many of them are moving into cities so you got cities that are growing and people are growing their mindsets are changing their thinking is changing uh, the atmosphere is changing meaning the the way things are done everything is changing right uh, so what is the future of urban life what what does it look like so if you look now there's there's already so much of advancement but this is uh, i just put down three points right and I put the points here uh it's just for our learning for our understanding right number one when you look at urban life the future of urban life there's going to be a mix of culture now no matter which country we are in we will have people from different cultures now there's going to come a time when all these mixed cultures right are uh, you know people from different cultures are going to work together and most probably there'll be a time when these cultures or these traditions that people walk by people followed for hundreds and hundreds of years uh, slowly they're going to die away right they're going to they're going to slowly die away because of the you know there's a mix of culture and people are going to just adopt this urban lifestyle and uh, that's that's number one that's a mix of culture and then we'll also see how it's going to impact and affect the churches right the church the the, uh, the future of the church or the ministry mix of culture two is because of this urban development right so we, we will see development in the corporate sectors and in, in, in the government and you know in accessibility every area there's going to be development right so this will increase job opportunities. So we're going to see the economy grow. People are going to get more jobs. I know that you know right now there's a lot of debate on you know the economy is low, there are no jobs, uh, but that is untrue, right? Uh, there are jobs. There are there's so much, and uh, job opportunities are just going to increase. And three, there's going to be easy access. When I say easy access, easy access for amenities accessibilities easy access for uh you know uh for work for for many 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 things right now look at this i would say maybe five years right not not very too long five years right Eight, 2018 
right? About 2018, 17, 18, five years before. The whole concept of work from home was very few, right? I, I remember meeting people and, uh, you know, whenever they say, hey, I work from home, I'd be wondering, doing what? You know, what can you work from home? And, uh, you know, I'm sure mo most of them must have felt this, right? Work from home, five years back. Now we're in 2023. Work from home is a normal thing. It's normal, right? You've got companies who, especially in uh, the nation of India, if you see many corporate organizations and companies have closed down their, you know, their spaces which they have taken because uh, it's no use. I mean, uh, they might as well just work from home and give better productivity. Uh, and now there's easy access for, uh, with all, you know, even the smallest of things. You can get your groceries home, you can get your products home, they come to your door. And nowadays, uh, I was just reading this article on, uh, 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 this article, it's a Indian news uh, article, Times of India. And it was said, and it said that uh, the nation of India is coming up with, you know, these apartment complexes where everything is inside, including schools and hospitals. So you don't really have to go out. You can stay in that community and everything is there inside. Right? So why am I talking about all this? The reason is we're going to be also looking at now as a church, how must you and I change or adapt to these changing things that we're seeing around? We look at future projections. We look at, OK, there's going to be people coming from all kinds of towns and villages. They're going to come to cities. And now if you have planted a church in the city, how prepared? must you be? What must you do to plan and prepare for you to reach out to every community, right? Uh, every, you know, sphere of influence. So the future of urban life is only going to develop more and more. Right? Now, one of the things that we can look at now, let's go to uh, a few disadvantages. Right now, there are plenty of disadvantages, but I also want to, I just want to pick up maybe two disadvantages of urban life, right? Number one is uh, being hybrid and multifunctional. Now, it's not, it's not that it's a disadvantage, but uh, it's more of a, you know, being hybrid is good, right? Uh, but there are times when it can be difficult for people, right, in the sense, uh, you know, we are people. We need people. We are relational by nature, right? So, for example, you know, when COVID hit in 2020, we were all locked into our homes. We really understood the value of people. Right? I'm sure I especially did. I uh, said because it was it was too much for me. It was like because we are people person, right? We we need to talk to people. We we minister to people, right? Uh, and uh, another, uh, you know, disadvantage could be, you know, uh, lack of spaces or lack of privacy, right? Uh, in a in a growing uh, setting, uh, lack of open spaces, lack of you know, and pollution, uh, uh, sense of there's no sense of community. So the, all these could be disadvantages of urban living, but. Let's look at the future of the urban church. Now, I know there's no points here, but I did quite a lot, and I just read about it. And uh, uh, there's not much that is available online. You know, many of them have shared their thoughts. Shared uh, there are a couple of books also talking about how you and I, as believers, uh, must be prepared for the future and look at the church of the future. But here's what I want to do this class, right? I want uh, maybe some of us to share. What do you feel is going to be, or is, which is already there, which is going to increase, or what are the new, new maybe prospects or things that are going to come when it comes to 
church when it comes to ministry what what is it that you, know, you can just feel free you share your thoughts you know and uh, we can put them down but what do you think is the future of the urban church like for example are you going to see, are we going to see thousands of people in each church which is wonderful or are we going to see thousands of churches planted with smaller locations or are we going to see uh, you know more of hybrid churches are we going to see more campus churches online churches? so what is it that you feel so you can think of maybe uh, in the next decade 2023 to 2033 right uh, what do you feel is the future of the urban church and i'm going to leave this open right so feel free please feel free to share right don't 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 be quiet but feel free to share and i'm sure we will uh, learn together uh, we will share these thoughts uh, nobody is wrong right uh, it could be a simple thing but it's all right it, it's good to share and uh, just learn together is that okay right uh, so i'll just leave it open so what do you feel in terms of the urban church what do you feel in the next decade is going to be most impactful or you can just share anything on the church in the next decade anyone would like um, to share? yeah i was i was thinking uh, you know the, there would be more churches and um, people also would love smaller communities and i think uh, th there would be a lot of church plans um, and there will be a lot of uh, people who will come coming to know the lord uh, love of the lord especially looking for communities because that's what lack in corporate uh, and you know, to share to discuss to to share the burdens and all that um, so i think uh, there will be a lot of focus on uh, smaller churches is just my thought uh, but there will be more church plans and no more people would come to know uh, the truth of the word and at the same time uh, technology also would uh, go into a very high impact mode um, look uh, you know reaching people uh, at their need uh, like looking at uh, you know you know not only on sunday service but um, also on weekdays how the word would reach people so the technology would definitely have a, uh, a lot more impact uh, when it comes to the next decade uh, thereby, there will be a lot of people who would come to know Jesus. Uh, even, I think people would be even willing to introduce people to churches uh, because of the word, because of the community, because of the availability of word in uh, you know in our fingertips. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think yes, that's that's, that's that's nice. Thank you so much, John. Yeah, uh, like we said, one of the disadvantages was. Um, communities and john said it well right uh, and i know many people who prefer to be in you know the smaller churches maybe maybe 100 150 uh, or even smaller right why because uh you got now i'm not saying we don't want the churches to grow right i'm not saying that uh, so I, i'm sure that's not what even john meant but john was all trying to say is that People are going to look for these smaller churches. The bigger mega churches are going to continue, going to uh, you know that's going to happen, right? But uh, looking for those smaller churches where people can really you know build build relationship, build communities. And I I completely uh, agree with John. Uh, people would definitely definitely look for that, right? Uh, but then we also need to balance, right? We can't say. Uh, you know, hey, my church is growing to 200 now. What do I do? Uh, I wanted my church to be 100 to build communities. Uh, you come up with ideas, right? We can just, you know, plan to do two services or something. Uh, uh, so, again, yeah, thank you, John, for sharing. Subasi says, I think there will be mega churches as well as there will be more uh, on house churches as persecutions will be more so in line. So, online churches will. Mm -hmm online okay sorry so online churches will help when the churches will be demolished by antichrist elements yeah thank you subashi thank you for sharing yeah so subashi says uh, the whole aspect of mega churches may come down uh, now uh, uh, i know we are from india but i want you to come out of india right uh, those, those come out of india right yeah, think think globally 
right? Uh, see, uh, I know that persecutions and uh, you know uh, all these antichrist elements and the things are going to come. But let's let's get out of the box. Let's come out of India. Let's think of it globally, right? Uh, uh, yes. Anyone else would like to say? Thank you, Subhashis. Thank you for sharing. Uh, can maybe some of them from. Uh, uh, Georgia, Paul, would you like to share some things that are happening at your home and uh, some of the improvements that you have seen and maybe what you can, you know, project uh, in the coming years? Yeah, Paul, go ahead. Yes, uh, in my country here, I see the projection. Yes, the, the, the urban churches will continue to grow because there are a lot of revival and restoration. Uh, crusades going on so so many people are going to turn to the lord and uh, to seek for jesus and what is happening even right now the the state that is the the state is already threatened they have already started bringing sanctions against the church they say this born against churches they make noise in the in the urban places so there are already laws we have mm -hmm. the laws called the national environment management act they're already imposing it on on the churches say if you are going to pray you are everywhere everywhere making noise so you have to pray in low tone so that is one of the the, the threats i see mm -hmm. and then also to agree with the, what jonas uh, talking about the mega churches in my country mega churches now uh, people will be looking for the for the small small churches because they they have more intimacy with the people to address mm. issues of the people whereas in the big urban churches uh, you know people are just many even the big renowned pastors they don't have time to focus on the individual problems of people in families for example people just go praise and worship what and go away but the small small churches are more focused on on their they look after their sheep more than those yes. big mega churches mm. yeah so that is what i can say for now yes Thank you so much, Paul. Paul, uh, where are you from? Are you from uh, Africa? Yeah, I'm from Africa, a place called Uganda. Uganda. Okay. So, uh, Paul, I just want to, sorry, I'm going to ask you just one more question, Paul. Uh, over the last 10 years, what have you seen in the church? Like, what have you, like, when I say church, not your local church, but uh, in Uganda, uh, the church, the, the body of Christ? Who, you know, you can just share what have you seen that has really impacted over the last 10 years? Like it could be internet, it could be social media. What What is it that has helped the church uh, to become stronger or to, you know, just grow? Uh, can you share maybe a few things about this? Yeah, actually it is the social media uh, when they pray and it is broadcast on the radio and television then people come to know hey, this a uh, powerful church this side this powerful church this side then through media the radio that is what makes people to to know about the church so that is what i've been seeing in my country for the last uh, 10 years wow yeah thank you so much paul yes so so we see that you know media is is majorly impacting the church anyone else would like to share Yes, go ahead. Go ahead, Jeffrey. Yeah, uh, I just want to share my, my personal insights. Uh, I feel like a lot of youth will be active in the, in the upcoming days because uh, I don't remember when, when I was a child, I haven't seen much youth active like how they are right now. And I feel like so much youth are active in church right now. And as the day goes, I believe much more youth will be taking care of things. Youth will be volunteering and they will be uh, stepping out to preach the gospel. And uh, technology, as uh, Pastor Paul has said, uh, John has said, uh, technology is also one thing uh, that's being accepted more in churches right now. Uh, back in when I was I was a child, I remember pastors preaching, uh, television is satanic, and <laughs> but right now they have live churches, they, they telecast it, they have their own TV channels. Uh, and I also feel like even the children, uh, 
right now i'm i'm teaching in uh, children's church uh, when i was a child what doubts i never had they ask me those things they they are so deeper in the word and uh, their maturity level is kind of kind of different that's what i i feel and they they know things uh, more quicker uh, quicker and in the early stages of their life uh, they know the definition of salvation they know when i was a child i know jesus is god <laughs> i know i know he he gave his life on the cross that's that's that was enough for me but but today's uh, children they need more information they need facts they need proof they need evidence and they are, they are questioning us why you are saying this why you are saying that and i believe in the upcoming days uh, even children they if if we give them enough facts and proofs and evidence that we convince them on their faith i think even they will be growing stronger and uh, more than us they might be preaching the gospel much more strongly uh, through their life i feel that uh, i strongly feel that uh, as i am teaching in an children's church right now uh, so yeah that's all that's one of the thing yeah yes thank you so much afina so you increase in youth uh, now it's interesting that uh, jafina said increase in youth right uh, because uh, if you look at what's happening in some of the countries you know uh, there's so much definitely there there, are, there is an increase in youth and youth ministry uh, but you know there's so much that is happening that uh, you know the evils of this world we look at the lgbtq the gay community you look at uh, the rise of uh, you know openness of uh, uh, you know of you know satanic worship and you look at the rise of uh, all these uh, cults that are coming up and also the diluted gospel uh, but it's interesting to know that you know we know that god will definitely raise up uh, young people who will stand for the lord and and also children yes definitely children are are way more the questions they ask are, are questions that we would ask when we were probably 20 years old uh, but they're, they're so high in their level of learning and their level of grasping uh, you know what is being taught so yes uh, we will see them also you know you've got the pros you've got the cons and and so i love the psalmist when he says children are like arrows in your quiver so uh, there's a lot of pros there's a lot of cons and as a church we must be able to use them as arrows point them to the right direction help them to understand the things of god and uh, you know uh, uh, and ministry and uh, you know god's word because it's going to be increasingly uh, challenging for them in a world that we are seeing right now where the enemy is just doing so much so Right. Uh, yes. Thank you for those two points, uh, Shafina. Anyone else would like to share? Uh, what do you think uh, is the future of the urban churches? I'll just share something that I uh, that I've been thinking of. I think one aspect of the urban church is going to be these um, uh, the the campus churches, right? Uh, of course, globally, it's still growing. Uh, there are a couple of good, you know. When you see globally, there are a couple of churches that already have these campus churches, and um, and I feel that over time, uh, campus churches are going to grow. So, what are these campus churches? Campus churches are basically going to be uh, uh, live stream churches, uh, right? So they're going to watch. I think I've shared this last time. So they'll have a. So uh, uh, let me just try to explain this concept, right? Uh, I read about this and it's really interesting and, and they're already doing it in the united states and and i'm sure it's going to come into different countries so you got your main church main church for example starts at 10 a.m right and you've got places in different countries or different states different countries and there are pockets of churches so what will happen is here is the 10 a.m service even here they would start the 10 a.m service so they have 40 minutes of worship. So all these places will have the same thing, 40 minutes of worship. And then they will have maybe announcements or what. And the main service, the main, probably the main sermon will be live streamed from here. And it will be, you know, everyone at these different places, campus churches will watch it live there. Right now, it is like 
uh, an online church, but it is not an online church because there will be people there sitting. So there will be ministries like life groups, women's ministries, cell group, you know, children's ministry. All of that will be there, but it, the the main service will be that which is followed there. And there will also be a campus pastor who will look after uh, the people there. So that's something that is uh, uh, on the rise, right? Uh, and I believe that that is something that especially, you know, when you look at India, we've got so much of, uh, you know, uh, educational growth that's happening, colleges and these great big universities that are coming up. Uh, so this could be one, you know, one thing that the church must be prepared for, right? To be able to live stream. Of course, we are doing the live stream now, but to uh, become like a satellite church, right? So campus satellite churches. Uh, that's something that will definitely uh, come through. So, yes, I just shared my thought. Anyone else would like to share? What, what do you feel is going to be the future of the church? Do you think that there's going to be street evangelism? Do you think there's going to be healings and miracles? Uh, how are these healing and miracles going to be? You just feel free to share your thoughts. So it's not only about you know church growth, or it's not only about you know, uh, or, you know the growth of the church, but also you can talk about, you can share about what do you think the the level of uh, those in the church is going to be, or what are some of the challenges that we will see going forward? Uh, never really thought about some of the challenges because when you look at what's happening now, things are quite convenient, right? Uh, uh, you got you got a church. You, you can't go to church. You can just stay online. The click of a button. You watch the entire service online. You pay your tithes online. Everything is online. So things are very convenient. But uh, yeah, would anyone like to share? Maybe uh, uh, even when you look at you know. Uh, I was recently talking to a pastor who was from a, a church in the village, right, in, in India. It's, it's a proper, like, a deep in the village. Uh, so we were just talking to him, and he was saying, now we have Wednesday Bible studies online. I was so happy. Now I've gone to his place. He's in the jungles. Right? It's, it's just one house, and the next house is maybe almost a kilometer away. He said, we have online uh, Bible study. So I thought to myself, wow, this pastor is deep in the jungle. So the first thing I asked him was, is there internet connection? Right. So he said, yeah, there is internet connection. So nowadays, uh, you know, all these uh, internet service providers are there everywhere. You know, there was a time once you go outside of the city, there's no internet. But now deep in the jungles, you have uh, internet. So you know advances that we see all right so feel free to think about this right remember the the pioneer must always look ahead plan ahead he must have the ability to foresee and you got to foresee things right 2033 you know if you see bible college i'm sure things are going to be so much more different of course, we stick to God's word. We teach God's word. But, you know, there's going to be different topics. There are going to be different ways of ministry. We, we don't know how things are going to be in this next decade. But we've got to foresee things ahead. Okay. These are the things that we see. These are the, you know, uh, the plans that we have. This is what we see globally. And let's be prepared. Let's be prepared to minister. Right. Uh, let's look at uh, this, this last few points here in chapter 27. Envisaging and preparing for the future. Number one, looking at trends. What is the trend? You know, uh, I was just talking to our digital uh, distribution head who works with us at of APC. And he was, uh, he was saying that, you know, towards in, the, in, in Bangalore, in our city, there's one portion which is the east of Bangalore. It has the highest number of Instagram and Facebook users across the city, east of Bangalore, because it's a more of a corporate 
uh, IT hub. So he was saying, you know what, instead of, you know, uh, doing all these worship evenings, booking uh, the venue and prepare, instead of all of that, just do good digital distribution promotions. So the moment people open Instagram, it will show, okay, that, you know, this is a, uh, the closest church near you or, uh, or, or, you know, they open Facebook, it will show. And it's reaching millions of people by the click of one button. So I was, I was just thinking of it. Was, look at what we can do. Looking at trends, we got to be, we got to flow with them, right? Two, very important to balance what you're doing by listening to the Holy Spirit. Very, very important. Now this whole AI and artificial intelligence and uh, all that is coming up, sometimes we are so dependent on them. We tell the Holy Spirit, I'll talk to you later. No. See, these tools and all of that that is there is good. But you need the person of the Holy Spirit. He is God. He is the one who will give us the wisdom to use what, what is there around us. Right? Now, for example, you know, you're a pastor. You have to prepare a sermon. This is just an example, right? You gotta prepare a sermon. You can just go to Google, go say, you go to AI or whatever, you just say, prepare a sermon on discipleship. You'll get a full sermon. You and then you go to other, you know, uh, PPT platforms, Canva and different other platforms. You say, prepare a PPT for discipleship. You'll get the whole thing. And it's good, it's wonderful. Right, we need these tools, but what is the disadvantage? I'm not going back to God's word, I'm not hearing from the Holy Spirit because everything I got online. So, here's the thing that we must do very important we spend time in God's word, spend time listening to the Holy Spirit, ask God, speak to Him, spend time in His spirit. Then you and I can use the tools that God has given us. Right? That's where you will find the anointing. That's where you will find that whatever you're doing will bless and minister to people. Right? Rather than, you know, I'm not saying don't use Google and all of the uh, material that's available online. Use it. But first go to the Lord. First ask God, listen to the Holy Spirit. Very important. Three, envisaging the future. That means foreseeing trying to come up with strategies and ideas about the future and future preparedness. Right? When you talk about preparedness, you say, OK, now this is what we will do going forward. Uh, we see these are the trends. These are the ways that we can reach out and preparing for them. Right? So when you look at, you know, we talked about youth and children, we talked about uh, smaller church communities. So how can we prepare for them? Yeah. Uh, come up with ways, come up with teaching programs, discipleship programs, and there's many ways, but to be prepared for the future, right? So these are just a few points and there's more that we can learn. What we will do is next class, we'll just look at uh, chapter 28, uh, 29 as well. Uh, I know it's the appendix, but I just wanted to go through this to, to get an idea on how you and I must prepare uh, for ministry. So next class, we'll just do this, and then we should be able to close off for this entire course. Right. right. Uh, any other questions, any other thoughts before we close? Okay. Right. So we'll close for today. Um, uh, what I'd like you to do is, you know, just always, you know, you can just go online, start reading about all of this. Right? Just is nothing. Uh, it's nothing wrong to read about your nation and about what's happening, the, the technological advances. Uh, uh, read about it. Uh, update yourself. Be prepared. Learn. Develop. Right. And 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 that way, what are we doing? Is we are we are preparing ourselves for God to just open doors for us. And when those doors open, we're not in panic mode. We are, okay, I know, okay. 
I've, I've prepared for this. I know that this door is opened by God and I've prepared and I know how to minister to them. Right? So uh, read about it, right? Go back home, read books, uh, try to understand your culture, the, the things that are coming up. Uh, uh, and, and, and I'm sure these are uh, very important when it comes to ministry. Right. All right. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. Uh, and uh, have a good week ahead. I'll see you soon. God bless.